Broadcasting live, it's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America, bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome into the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Ben Crossman, and everyone out there, I hope you're having a fantastic day and you're ready for some Computer America. So today on the program, in the second part of the show, as usual, uh, computer and technology news, where we try to keep you up to date on, you know, just the latest tech stuff, uh, see which large company has lost your data, that kind of thing. Uh, it's always a lot of fun, but uh, in the first part of the show we have a guest and not so usual well this is going to be about piano you know that um, of course the the previous host of computer america craig crossman he um, you know he was a classically trained pianist and of course loved music so music has always had a fond uh, you know computer america music and technology we've always had a soft spot for it and we definitely you know enjoy the two and how the two um, definitely have intermingled. It's, uh, you know, it's not just about audio, but it's also about how technology can help uh, music and music can help technology. You know, you would think, uh, you know, technology is a very sterile, very, you know, non-artistic kind of medium. But uh, no, you know, the two have learned to coexist and coexist very, very well. And today, actually, we're going to be talking about, well, learning how to play music using technology. And this is, um, you know, this is going to be something for everyone out there, you know, whether you're just starting learning to play the piano or you've always wanted to, or hey, you know, this is, this is gonna be a great show for you. Joining us today is none other than Piano in a Flash. And uh, in just a moment, we'll introduce Mr. Scott Houston, who is the founder of the company. And uh, yeah, we'll get into his background. This is gonna be a lot of fun. But everyone, before we do that, computeramerica.com, that's where you'll find everything, including a link to our guest website. Uh, anything that we talk about on the show here today, we'll be sure to include it. And I don't say this often because obviously we're a radio show. Um, of course, we have the video portion, but this one will be uniquely suited for video because uh, Scott has put a lot of work into this and has a great video uh, component to today's show. So even if you're listening on the radio, we highly recommend you go back, check it out, uh, check out the video uh, out on YouTube. And of course, hey, check out their sites, pianoinaflash.com. Now, with my long-winded introduction, I want to go ahead and just get things started here. So we're going to go ahead and unmute everyone. We should be good to go. And welcome onto the program once again, founder of Piano in a Flash, Scott Houston. Scott, how you doing? Ben, how you doing? It's great to be on the show. I'm hey, I'm happy that you could join us, and um, yeah, and, and thank you so much for, uh, for for taking the time out. This is oh, I'm uh, thrilled to do it. Yeah, I, absolutely. And uh, you you certainly sound it. Love to hear it. I gave a very wandering kind of introduction to technology and music, and of course, I didn't even touch on your background. Um, let's go ahead and start with, uh, you know, who is Scott Houston? Give us your background, and then how you decided that, you know, we need a, a website, a service, Piano and a Flash. How did Piano and a Flash uh, kind of get started? All right. Well, you, you've opened a, a giant barn door, so I'll start <laughs> to step through it. <laughs> and, and you know, you always got to love having me as a guest because I'm the only guy that can play his own bumper music in and out, right? So. <laughs> 
<laughs> so it's, it's always kind of a plus when I do when I do interviews. Like it's like, hey, hey, we've got some music built in. So, and I'll be I'll be sharing that with with everyone as we get into this. I'm Perfect. sure. But yeah, I if anyone recognizes me at all, it's it's probably uh, from my TV career, I guess. I, I'm actually more known as Scott the Piano Guy, as kind of hokey as that sounds, but I always laugh and say, be careful what someone calls you when you first start on TV, because it's going to stick like mud and you'll never get rid of it. But <laughs> yeah, we had we had a TV series called The Piano Guy that uh, aired for 14 seasons on public television channels all over the country. We aired nationwide. I was, you know, I, my little uh, humble brag here, but I'm very proud of it as we, we won six Emmy Awards across the, the run of that show and had over 180 episodes. So most people that, that connect the dots with me or Scott Houston or Scott the Piano Guy or My Ugly Mug in some way, it's from the <laughs> TV show. And we also did uh, pledge specials, you know, for public television. Mm -hmm. We did two or three of them that were very well received. They've, they've run for gosh, nine, 10 years now. And so through all of that, my, my background previous to that, and this is going to be kind of a good segue into how we eventually got, got technology wise to where we are and are really, really thrilled to be doing what we're doing, you know, completely online now. But my background was, uh, not only as a piano player, but uh, in the music industry. And I worked in the publishing industry, music publishing. This is print publishing, that is. Mm -hmm. And the the situation that any professional piano player will find themselves in quite often, and by pros, I, I, I mean not a concert pianist. I mean some guy that's out working gigs all the time. You know, somebody that you see out in your local Italian restaurant or somebody that's out, you know, playing concerts, things like that. Right. As opposed to um, someone who's a concert pianist or really is, you know, of which there are probably, you know, uh, <laughs> maybe 50, 60 in the whole world that are actually out working as concert pianists, right? But in, instead of that situation, for, for guys that are just out working all the time, it, it's kind of a comedic thing that, that the fraternity will always tell you, which is whenever you're out playing live, one of two things will happen, or both of them will happen multiple times throughout an evening. And that is, one, someone coming up behind you and saying, man, I wish I could play piano, right? <laughs> and and number two is they'll say, gosh, I wish I would have kept taking lessons when I was a kid. Mm. And it's always kind of a funny thing, Ben, because the reality is what pros play in this style, this, this these non-classical styles, and that's exclusively what I teach and what we do and what we've been doing for 25 years. I'm kind of the non-serious piano player and the non-serious piano teacher. And that's really, I think, why we found the success we did with the TV show. So my my whole shtick, if you will, is for is for you, Ben. I don't know if you play or not, but you said someone previous yeah, to you yeah, did. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, Craig Crossman uh, hosts the show, and of course, my dad. He uh, he he was a classical championist. He played for um, you know forty fifty years, and you know he Fantastic. still it, it like really that's how we kind of met my mom. He he played piano for. Her. So <laughs> hey, it's a great way to pick up chicks, I guess. Um, there you yeah, go. Absolutely. But I would say I would say probably you'd be better off flying Girl from Ipanema than uh, you know a Bach two part <laughs> invention for most of the girls I know. So, I so you. maybe this will get you a, a more direct shot to it. But anyway, no, there, there's absolutely nothing in any way wrong or in any way that I'm ever casting stones at, at classical piano or classical mm -hmm. piano players. It's just the reality is for adults, and this is all I teach are adults. Adults. 99 out of 100 of them don't want to go do that. They want to sit down and play what you're playing when they see you playing outside. You know, you hear a dueling piano thing or whatever it might be. And the route to do that is a very different route than the route you take to becoming a good classical player. And that's the, that is the message that I've been shouting from the mountaintop for 20 close to 25 years now that just doesn't get out much. And there's not many private teachers that teach in these non-classical styles that we teach. And it's, they're kind of two different, you know, a, a good analogy, Ben, I think mm -hmm. is uh, you think about guitar players, right? Think of like a flamenco or a classical guitar player, you know, playing and, and you know, very technically right. doing that. And then think of Eddie Van Halen playing rock guitar, right? Looks you know, a lot it's more fun. Yeah. Well, it's a completely different exercise. And, you know, to learn to play those two styles, you, you don't do the same thing. And similarly on a piano, that's the same situation. But most people don't aren't aware of that. And they think, hey there's one route. I'm going to take piano lessons. I'm going to go out and start taking lessons once a week from Mrs. Smith down on the corner. And I'm going to go work through a method and, and do that. And the reality is sadly for the people that don't want to play classical piano. Well, even those that do, frankly, the, the dropout rate is, is enormous and has been for, for a hundred years. 
So what we do is this fantastically faster, fantastically more laser focused uh, way to get adults to have fun and sound good playing as soon as possible. So, so I mean, we're talking my, weeks yeah. and months, not years and years, right? So, so my immediate reaction, uh, and and this is uh, you know really to to your point about people saying that they wish they kept doing it or they wish that they learned. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I'm I'm going to sound stupid for saying this, but uh, yeah. is it you know is it ever too late? And um, you know people who think oh. that this is a skill that you need to you know start when when you're young, practice as you grow, and you know it's just too late for me to learn. Is that true? Well, you've kind of pitched me underhand, and I think all all the listeners are probably going to guess what I'm going to answer, but. Um, <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, our we have a lot of students in our program, and I'm not making this up. We have many, many, like in the hundreds of students that are 80 and above. So well, it's well. It's, if you like me, you uh, know, uh, what well, well, you like a little bit harder of a question. You mentioned that so many people drop out. The dropout rates are uh, very, yes. very high. Why do you think, as someone who's been teaching this for so many years and you know been in the industry, see, I'm sure you've seen people who uh, you know just throw up their hands and say. I can't do this. Why do you think the dropout rate would be so high or is so high? I've I've got a, an incredibly accurate response to that, and that is because learning to read traditional music notation is incredibly difficult. Mm. It's like a foreign language, and it's super hard to get really good at that. And in the world of classical piano, there is this unbreakable link between your ability to read notation and your ability to play piano. And you can't play better until you can read better. Right. It's you, you can't be and the, the reason that is, is because you're out playing, you know, repertoire, you know, classical repertoire. And so a teacher would say, hey, you know, here, here's this next piece we're going to learn. It's a tougher piece to play, but you don't even know what it is until you can read it. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, in our world, and this is really kind of one of the revelations of, of why we have the success we do. Pro players don't read standard music notation. They read something called a lead sheet, Ben. It's it's L E A D, a lead sheet. And you know, if I go out to a recording session and someone plops something in front of me and we're gonna either record a jingle or I don't know, you know, cut an album or whatever it may be, you know, you don't get passed out a traditional piece of music notation as most people would think of it. Instead, you get this thing called a lead sheet. And all a lead sheet has on it is a one note melody line with chord symbols up above. So like guitar players play chord symbols. Well, that's what, what professional piano players use as well. There you go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, <laughs> I can perfect. find the example. Well, there you go. Well done. Well done. Yeah. So you've got a, you've got the chord changes up above it. And that's really what tells you that's the harmony, if you will. But that's what tells your left hand what to do. And then in the right hand, from a reading perspective, all you need to do forever, no matter how good you get, you'll only need to read a single note at a time always notated in the treble clef. And if that's talking over any, anybody listening to this, if you don't read it all, what I'm describing is what they get kids doing, you know, at the end of the first week of band in eighth or ninth grade, right? Mm -hmm. It's just reading a single note at a time in this one staff, as opposed to traditional sheet music, which is, you know, multiple staffs and multiple notes at the same time. It's a, it's a giant rub your head and pat your tummy issue. <laughs> and that's, that is what knocks 90% of the people out of playing piano. And by, by doing and teaching lead sheets instead, it's not cheating. It, this is legitimately the way pros play. But by doing it, you just kind of by default throw about 90% of the difficulty of, of beginning piano and just kind of toss it out the window and get to a point where you can play really quickly. So let me, and I, if you don't mind, Ben, I'm going to go ahead sure. and switch this camera shot. And for those of you listening, I'll describe what I'm doing. But sure. um, to do that, the like it, with chords in your friend, if, if I just teach you three chords, if if and I'm this is very simple stuff, right? But so something like that. And you know, this is the way we would do it. We'd actually have a camera over the hand shot like this. But I, for those of you listening, I'm just holding my fingers over three notes. And, and I could, you know, if I was standing with you, I could just say, put your fingers on these three notes and there you go. And it doesn't matter what fingers you're using or anything like that. This is always kind of a, a funny situation, but I'll play this chord using different fingers every time. And you tell me which one you think sounds better. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, they all same. sound identical. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So and I know that just makes a lot of people blanch and serious piano players want to reach through the reach through the airwaves and choke me when I say that. But the reality is that for other reasons, it just doesn't matter that much at the beginning. We're trying to get someone playing. But if I show you a chord like that, mm -hmm. then I say, OK, pick your hand up and just start it on another note, another note. Pardon me. Right. And then we'll do one more. 
there. I just, and what those chords were is a C and an F and a G chord. Not that anyone needed to know that, but so I, you know, same hand position. And I could get anyone at any age doing this and memorizing these three chords in maybe five minutes. I mean, it's just not that big of a mountain to climb, right? right. Well, once you do that, I just taught you the, the three main chords that are used in, in, and I'm not making this up, probably, God, I, it's, who knows what the number, it's, it's tens, if not hundreds of thousands of tunes, There's, are three chord tunes. Yeah, and, and, you know? and, and by the way, if you don't mind me jumping in here, I, I got to say that this no, is... No, please do. Yeah, this is very reminiscent of, uh, of really a language learning technique where you learn your basic introductions, you learn, you know, please, thank you, hello, good day, uh, you know, where are you from? Yes. You learn your basics and, you know, really in day-to-day conversation, that may be 80% of it. And of course, the nuances come later. That that's an inc- a super good analogy, Ben, and, and thank you for sharing that. It is, but you know, I can whether I'm playing something like, no, I'm just playing a melody line on top of this using those three chords, right? Mm-hmm. So there, or maybe I play, um, right, it, uh, two of those three chords. I mean, I could go on and on. Uh, you know, it's it, the reason those sound so familiar is they're the three chords that are used in the blues, which is the basis of rock and roll. So, you know, using those chords, I'm going to start, like I said, adding some more stuff to it. But you could play something like, you know, right. you know, and going on and on. So I don't want to get into that too heavily <laughs> for visual reasons. But, but having said that, that's kind of the thrust of of how we get someone going. We say, look, you don't want to play some dumb tune like the wigwam tune and some <laughs> piano method. You want to sit down and play right away. And it is, it, it probably is a good analogy to language learning and say, you want to have some conversational ability right from the get go. And that's what I do. I think with a laser focus that, that really no one else does that, that we're aware of. That's kind of what separates us. And I think it's what's allowed me over the last 15, 20 years to, to get, tens if not hundreds of thousands of people playing yeah. piano and i know that sounds really presumptuous and a giant kind of made up number but again i've been doing this a long time and we've had just an incredible number of people learn to play doing it this way well and, and the great and, news is now we've we've gotten it to a point where we've got it online and we'll get into that next yeah for, for sure and and um obviously a couple points here to touch on uh, the first thing is uh I, kind of going back a little bit to the traditional sheet music that you were talking about, uh, you know, you're you're doing away with, uh, like you said, a lot of the uh, a lot of the difficulty that people may be intimidated by uh, immediately. Uh, that's not to say that you know some of these skills that we're talking about uh, beyond the basics are completely useless. You're just saying that you can push them off to you know more advanced later, right? Yeah, it's funny. Lots of times I'll consider, you know, if you've got X amount of information you need to teach a student, there's like a basket full of this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I, it's, it's a funny thing that I think traditional teachers and me pull from the same basket. We just do it in a really different order. I tend to push aside some of the things that, they, that people focus on like crazy at the beginning in traditional classical piano lessons like note reading. Because again, and it, no one's doing anything wrong. This is not in any way a casting stones or casting aspersions or or saying that it's just the nature of the beast that when you can't play any better until you read better you end up focusing an enormous amount of time on learning how to read notation and that is what that that is the main thing that knocks most people out it's not the hands on piano part it's the i can't read the notation part and so we we will get to that and yeah. somebody says, oh so you never teach note reading i'm like no we do teach them note reading right from the get-go just incredibly basic note reading like i said just a single note melody line and we get to that later on but you know that's after you can play 30 or 40 tunes and you're having fun coming home every night and pouring yourself a glass of wine or a cup of coffee and and being able to just sit down and play some tunes you know and that's what someone wants to do is they're not they call it playing piano not working piano right Right. (laughs) and i and for adults the goal is not to go out and do this professionally and it's not to go and become a concert pianist and it's not to go out and work gigs it's to be able to sit down and play some darn tunes and enjoy yourself and not sound like a schmo doing it right Uh, and you want to yeah and 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 really i would say it's so common that i will go over to other people's houses and you know and 
well, I said that Craig played piano. I actually do not play piano, but uh, we still have like keyboard. And we always have like a Steinway sitting in the middle of the room uh, somewhere. Beautiful. And, 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 and like, you know, people, you know, they, they come in the house and they're like, oh, can you play? And I'm like, oh, heck no. Like that was something that, uh, <laughs> and, and of course I go, right. to, I go to other people's houses. They have, uh, you know, they, they have pianos that they inherited or they just had pianos forever and they can't play either. It, like it seems like such a, so many people, and I'm not saying that everyone has a piano, uh, but right. you know, a lot of people have pianos that they never, you know, they have the equipment, but they never had the way to learn it. I guess that's right. And it's you know, the the cry and shame is most people will, you know, they they get to a point where they're like, look, can I just sit down and play this thing rather than dust it once a week for the rest of my <laughs> life? And and alternatively, people that do play some traditional piano always feel stymied. And again, I'm not making this, this is students talking to me about this, that, you know, yeah, I took some lessons. I, I was one of the two or three out of a hundred that, that got through the beginning thing and I really could play a little bit. But, you know, I go over to a friend's house and they say, hey, Janet, why don't you sit down and play something? And they say, oh, I didn't bring my music. Right. And then, you know, then my response to that is like, well, that's okay. Cause I didn't want to see you read anyway. I just want to see <laughs> you play. Like, you know, the, the reading needs to be a, a means to an end of, of making music. So we're all about becoming music makers. Not, you know, I want to be known as a good piano player, not a good piano note reader. Right. And, and the way to do that musically correctly and efficiently and to sound good is to learn the way pros play using lead sheets. It is, it is not something I made up. It's not some hokey color by number, or it's not some hokey software, you know, learning to play and gamifying it and all that. You know, there's some of those things out there where they mm -hmm. take notation and put it on its end. And so notes drop vertically out of the sky, kind of Galaga style. <laughs> that was the name of that old, I think that was the name of that old, now you know how old I am, right? Well, when, and, when dinosaurs and roamed for, the and people played Galaga. Yeah, and, and of course for, um, you know, for people, people about my age it's uh kind of like ddr i don't know if you've ever seen those dance machines yeah. and arcades yep. uh, it, yep. it, it looks a lot like an arcade machine uh doing the same thing yep. but i think that's a great lead yes. in to uh, really what you're here to talk about which is piano in a flash i mentioned piano and flash.com sure. if people want to check that out uh we'll have a link over at our website after this whole thing but i do want to say that um yeah, talk about developing this, and you know, you mentioned that. Well, you can't be in everyone's homes, uh, like right now in person, but you can create a lesson plan, I guess, and you can talk about what you actually created, how you decided to create it. Uh, yeah, how are you teaching people when you know, like I said, uh, people for many, many years have preferred someone come into their home and do one-on-one -on -one lessons, that kind of thing. Uh, how did you develop something that people can just, you know, log in and watch? Sure, sure. And it's a it, it, the the genesis of this was 15 years in the making of you know when we started the show and when I started to what really launched the whole thing what allowed me to have a TV show to begin with was this book I wrote called Play Piano in a Flash that was a, a bestseller and it was you know a little paperback and it was in all the bookstores nationwide and then that launched a pledge special and then the pledge special launched the series so in doing all of that you know we used to sell books I used to have you know and it wasn't a traditional piano method because I always kind of pushed back and said no 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 this is not your your mother or father's piano method this is a a really shorter version version directly to you getting to a point where you can play. And so I kind of did the, the, you know, let me throw a bucket of information on you to throw mm -hmm. the water on you. And then you can let it dry off on your own time <laughs> that way. And only because there was no other way to do it. Cause like you said, I couldn't be everywhere at once. So people would buy a book and then we had DVDs when, you know, as that market was giant. So I, I did a lot of instructional things. We had 25, 30 DVDs at one point still have them we're just <laughs> they're just selling it because no one buys dvds anymore but right. the uh you know but all these instructional things but they were all just one way right it was all just hey let scott unload on you and then you hope it makes some sense and we would answer some questions now and then but it wasn't it, it it worked well and we actually had a lot of success doing it but there was always this kind of probably you know i this is anecdotal number i'm making up here but you know 20 to 30 percent of the people would say man, Scott, I love this technique. It's working well. I, you know, do you teach, you know, do you teach lessons? I, I just want to, I want to get deeper into it. I, I need some more handholding. I'm not a great person to read something and then have the stick to itiveness to do it forever. So I, I, you know, all of that had been germinating and, you know, we were cooking, we were on an 86% of the country for yeah, like I said, probably nine, 10 years. So yeah. things were really happening. We had a lot of, <laughs> when you do that, it's an oddball thing about being on TV 
it stirs the pot. You hear from a lot of people constantly. Your your email and your phones blow up when you go on TV, and it's it's a goofy thing. I wouldn't have believed until it happened to me. But anyway, with all that, we I really was was thinking, you know, th- there's a way to do this, and I've got to figure it out. And and again, this will probably sound like Fred Flintstone to a lot of your listeners <laughs> because of the time. But it wasn't that long ago that everyone did had access to high speed enough internet that you could do video, you know, video on the internet was not really ubiquitous even 10 uh, years no, ago. It's uh, it, and, and really this advancement that you're talking about, we saw in our industry as well with, uh, you know, with radio, because we, of course, you know, 20 years ago when Craig started the show or 25, uh, wow, wow. 29 years ago when Craig started the show, uh, actually in about wow. two days. Yeah. About two days is going to be our 29th year in syndication, but 29 years Man, ago, that's great. Th- thank you so much. They, um, it, of course, WJNO down in South Florida, uh, they had to go into the station and do that kind of thing. Um, about 15 sure. years ago, we got an ISDN line put into uh, our home so we could actually make a home studio. Right. And about maybe seven, eight years ago, regular internet was good enough that we could do our radio program just with internet that everyone else is doing. Uh, that advancement has been, you know, of course, like you said, about four or five years ago, we could really reliably have a good video feed. Um, you're, you're saying that that, you know, because you mentioned uh, uh, PBS yeah. and the like, you're able to create uh, video as good as you would put on TV in a home studio. And upload. that is exactly yeah. right. That is exactly right. So, you know, I had this studio and I'd been doing video for DVDs and then, you know, things went HD and all that. But the reality was I was just thinking, you know, there's this kind of here were the pieces of it. And I'll, I hope I don't lose everyone. Sure. And, but it was kind of a, a, a three pronged approach. And I'd say, you know, somebody say, Scott, do you teach? And I'd say, well, no, because I really think I have a problem with weekly private lessons. And I guess I'll just say this. I may I may anger some people listening to this, but I'm here we go. I have a problem because I think it's so teacher centric as opposed to student centric. And that, and it's not, I understand why it's that way. A teacher has to have, it needs to be that way for them to have a schedule and do it. But the reality is you go for 30 minutes to someone else's house or they come to your house for that matter, but it's a schedule, right? Mm -hmm. Well, who said that every seven days was some magic number that was going to take you to accomplish something, right? So it was always this huge challenge and mystery as a teacher to try to parse out exactly the right amount that it would take a student to be ready for you in the next week. And then because, and I, again, I get it, just the nature of the the setup, you needed to take a lesson every week because the teacher needed to rely on you paying for it once a week, right? That, That was their, that's their business to do that. And, you know, everyone can relate that's ever had a lesson to showing up for a lesson, not prepared and really kind of throwing your money away. And say, it, it, so it, it wasn't a very student centric model to say, I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to have you for 30 minutes. We're going to spend five or 10 at the beginning, probably, you know, warm up some exercises. We're going to chit chat for five or 10. You're going to really teach something for five or 10. So, and then I'm going to go home without yeah. you and not be able to see you do it again. So here's so, so so here's kind of my response to that is that that mimics what we have been doing with public education, private education, what have you, where the student shows up, the teacher imparts a lesson, and then it's the uh, it's the student's job to you know learn it and either on a test or just you know be able to really understand it. But you're saying that in your experience, and especially you know not just for kids in you know kids in school, but in your experience that that model is not the only model or it, it's not, it's not the best model. Which one? <laughs> well, both, but cho- you know, choice B is, is it just, you know, you can shoot the messenger, but it just didn't work very well. Mm-hmm. I mean, you look at the dropout rate of beginning piano students, you know, I could walk on a, on a airplane randomly and, and stand up and say, okay, everybody hold up your hand. Who's taking a piano lesson. And you know, I'll bet, and I'm not making this up, maybe 80, 85% of the people say, yeah, at some point in my life, mom, dad sent me to a lesson or I took, you know, school or wherever. And then I would say out of those that raised their hand, the 85%, how many of you can sit down and play a tune on a piano and it'll be one or two, you know, <laughs> and, and it just isn't working very well. Right. And it wasn't for a long time. And I think this was kind of an alternative, but then to, to push forward with that, you know, teacher student centric model, I was thinking, but I, I when, when all of this was coming up, online video wasn't ubiquitous. So we couldn't do it from a technical standpoint, but I'm like, you know, what really needs to happen. I don't need to be live when the teaching's going on. I can, I, I know what I need to teach, 
Mm -hmm. And it'll be incredibly freeing for me as an educator to not have to try to guess and parse out, you know, this, this kind of false seven day gap that I need to, you know, here, this is seven days worth of something. So by the time you come back in a week, you'll be ready. I could do what was really made more sense from a, from a, content standpoint you know there's something i may need to teach you here you know we need to learn this new family of chords you know that's a minor seven chord you know <laughs> sounds like that here's the things well i could show it to you in two or three minutes and that's kind of what i needed to show you right then and, and until you really understood that we wouldn't move on so in the way i'm doing it now i just do that and it may be a five minute lesson and it may take you five minutes to get it underhand something else needs to be you know what you really need to do is get to the point where you can do this you know well, that's something that I may need to show you in 15 or 20 minutes, and it may take you two weeks to get underhand. Mm -hmm. But the point is, I'll be here waiting to give it to you, you know, in, in these pre-recorded things. Whenever you're ready, you work on it as long as you need to. And whenever you're ready, come back to the well, and I'll keep dishing out the next thing, irregardless of time, irregardless of how long it's going to take you. And I'm telling you, I think we hit kind of a secret sauce with that. So to bring that into real pragmatic terms, sure. um, when a student is in our program, we have, we have online video. So you, you know, you enroll and you get in and the, the you just work through, I, it's, it's probably an analogy I've used a few times that I think may help for listeners is, is I'm going to drive the bus, but you're going to, you're going to decide how fast or slow the bus goes. So you, you get to use, you get to use the accelerator and the brake pedal, but I'm going to steer. And I know I've got this, this, stuff I need to teach you in this order that I'm going to teach you. Mm -hmm. And it will come to you in our online program. It'll be parsed out to you that way. And you move on, you know, and you know, in an adult's life, there may be a week or two where, you know, life gets in the way and you just aren't, you're just not doing it. That's okay. Because there's no, you know, this isn't a subscription. It's a, you enroll once and you've got access for life. So mm -hmm. you, you've purchased it, if you will, or you've enrolled and it, it's yours. Now, the other piece to that, that then say, okay, well, that's pretty standard. You just got online video, right? Well, the, the issue was there was also, everyone felt a lot more comfortable with something printed in front of them. They wanted to do both, right? And that may have, part of that was probably just the paradigm that everyone's used to of sitting down with a method book in front of you. But, um, you know, we, we wanted to have, I want to have as a teacher, I want to describe something on a page. Here we are on page 15 in course book two or whatever right. it may be, blah, blah, blah. And I'll go through it, but you need to see that because that's what you're going to really see when you learn to play these lead sheets. So we, you need to see the lead sheet in front of you and it's not all online. So we've got, when you enroll, you get printed materials and, and I, they're, I, they're very integrated with the lessons I have. So I'll be saying during the lessons, okay, now open up course book two. Here's where we are, blah, blah, blah. Now look in the middle of page 15. You see this thing. This is why this chord change looks like this. And, you know, whatever it may be, it's as though I'm there with you with a, a book open. But then that left out a third piece of the puzzle. And this was the big one that mm -hmm. was absolutely good about being in front of someone in a live lesson. And that is that the ability to get feedback should you need it, right? And so the way we solve that is we have in our courses, if anyone has any issues or any questions, and they, it's just, it's in the online environment, there's a feedback and support tab, someone can send a question in to me. And if it's simple enough, sometimes it's email, somebody wants to record something they could, or if they want to do a video, they could do that. Most of them just come in and easy email their usually pretty straightforward questions is saying, Hey, you know, you described the fingering for a whatever, an F seven chord. I I'm having a hard time getting my pinky on that a flat, any mm -hmm. suggestions, you know, things like that, pretty pragmatic stuff. And so the answer, I either, depending on what it takes, I can either email them back or I record something or I sit in this, for those of you that aren't listening on radio, but actually seeing this, I'm in this studio doing this all the time. I answer student questions. So within 24 hours, typically, it's not a guarantee, but 90% of them within 24 hours, I'll send back a video to say, hey, Ben, I got your question about blah, blah, blah. Here's how I do it. I know this may sound a little funny, blah, blah, blah. And you'll actually get a video with my hands on the keyboard answering your question. So it's, it's a great thing for adults. And again, I, I yeah. focus this just for adults in these three pieces to summarize it's 
You don't need to show up in front of someone else and potentially embarrass yourself once a week. And that is kind of an issue for adults. They don't want to go sit in front of another adult. You know, this, this is not a, a, a little kid coming in to take right. a piano lesson. This is, this is you going in to see another adult at the same time and saying, holy moly, I don't want to go. <laughs> it's Thursday at four o'clock and I'm not ready. And I'm going to, you know, none of that. It's completely on your own time. You log in, you could do it 24 seven. You could be in your jammies if you want to. <laughs> you watch something. You know, you've got the book to back you up. If you have any questions, you send in support requests and we get back to you and just answer that stuff. And I think with a combination of that and with the online system leading you, you know, from lesson to lesson and, and every little lesson rather than being 30 minutes long or something, again, they're just, it's the old, how to eat an elephant one bite at a time thing. So they're just <laughs> these, these, these chunks and some of the chunks are bigger than others, but after every little chunk, I'll just stop and say, Hey. That's all I'm doing right now. So get this underhand. And and then there will be a small exercise. It just confirms that you've got that underhand. And so you do it. And it, it may take five minutes. It may take an hour. It may take you a couple of days. But the, we just we just keep chipping away at it that way. And it's, I think yeah. it's really working well. So it, it, it seems like another benefit to that, of course, and this is why maybe more adults and you know uh, seniors are, are really taking a liking to this. Uh, another reason is, first of all, like you said, the embarrassment, you know, you, you don't have to, mm -hmm. you don't have to not be good at something in front of someone else. You can, you know, do it in the privacy of your home, like you said. Uh, although, you know, as usual, being bad at something is the first step of being good at something. So everyone remember that. Uh, the second thing is that, you know, like you said, seven days, that's not a magic number. That's just, you know, a schedule that people did for their own sake. Uh, the only thing I would recommend for this kind of thing, and I'm taking my experience from uh, when we had like language learning courses on the show, you know, uh, things like this, I will say that yes, uh, you you say you know you don't it doesn't have to be every seven days, but doing this with regularity, doing it um, you know con not constantly, but you know making sure you practice at it and you you keep it fresh in your mind to some extent as you learn it. Uh, with your course, do you gate people saying, you know, you've done three lessons this week, that's as much as, you know, any human can do, we're going to limit you, or can people yeah. advance as they as they see fit uh, to learn, you know, the skill? Yeah, that that's a definite choice B. Yeah, they it, it is not gated in any way. And it's really interesting when we see kind of the user patterns, we will see people go through, you know, uh, chunks like voraciously. So somebody <laughs> will... will maybe in a week or two, get through a month and a half or two lessons. And then you'll see a gap where, yeah, it happens. And that to me isn't weird. I think it's fantastic. And it makes me feel like we've designed this well, because again, we're, we're, we're fitting into an adult's life or a parent's life or whoever, you know, maybe you go on vacation or maybe, a, you know, again, work gets tougher, but then there's some other moments where you're like, you know, I'm going to sit down and do this. And you're just kind of on a roll. Well, man, when you're on a roll, you don't need to wait four or five more days to come back to me for a lesson, go get it, tiger, <laughs> you know, keep going and, and let that happen. And I think, yeah, I think that's a positive of the way we do things. Something else I left out when you were talking about wanting to needing to keep chipping away. And I, I grant you, yeah, if, if this, i certainly don't have a magic wand and, and there's nothing I can do to, you know, tap you on the forehead and say, Hey, you're a player, mm -hmm. but you know, I don't need a magic wand. It just isn't that hard to play in this style to get started at least to a point where you're sounding good. And that's another big key of the method that was an issue that kept me from really writing a quote unquote piano method in the past. I was doing things like here, here's some good ideas on how to play the blues. Here's great Christmas ideas. Yeah. Here's gospel ideas or something. I was kind of dumping information out, but I was, I never did this linear method until now and took the about, you know, about two and a half, three years total to get all this done when we launched this three or four years ago. But Part of my issue with that, and it was my hesitance, is that one of the weird things about piano methods is that as you're beginning, you can't play really hip tunes, right? I mean, you're, you need to play. It's like I laugh about the wig, wigwam song or something. Yeah. So people that write methods write these original songs for those methods, and they're frankly really hokey. And it's really something you would never want to sit down, you know, so you're, you're working your buns off for a month or two and starting out and your wife says, Hey, how's it going, honey? And you say, Oh, great. You know? And then you say, well, come on, play me something. So you sit down and you do this, you know, <laughs> you know, she's like, ah, that's great. Like, yeah. Okay. Knock yourself out. Have fun. Right. So it's, it's, uh, you know, instead you want to say, you know, how's it going? And you want to say, Oh, great. And it's, you know, 
you know chestnuts roasting right yeah something you know or at christmas goes or when it's when it's time for someone to have a birthday you want to be able to sit down and play the birthday song we we teach the birthday song in the first four or five five lessons for that reason there's some a lot of people laugh and say all right scott let's just cut right to the chase here's what i need birthday song two or three christmas carols and <laughs> auld lang syne then i'm done <laughs> you know, then I've, I've got the repertoire i need to be able to sit down in a at a party for the rest of my life and, 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 and the, really uh and, and really that's that's another part of it you know of, of course you want to progress with through the lessons as best you can and you know in a timely fashion but i do want to say that that's something that i really enjoyed about you know uh other kinds of software and again this is so relevant to language software i, I apologize for keep making the comparison but no, i gotta say that's good yeah but but i gotta say that going back and you know if i if i do take a month off being able to go back two or three lessons that i previously learned to kind of catch me up um, you know, if you went into a teacher after not scheduling a session with them after a month, they might get a little annoyed at you saying you haven't been keeping up with your lessons. Let's go over once again, what we already learned. They would get annoyed at you, mm -hmm. but Hey, you can go back a lesson. No one's going to get annoyed at you. Yeah, you can, you've got full access to all of them backwards, forwards, you know, stop. And frankly, there's an issue too there that when, when in a live setting, and this is kind of an advantage of video, it, and it's just, it, that's, this is a very physical thing, but you know, if I'll switch back to my hand shot and for those sure. of you listening, I'll describe this, but you know, if I'm playing and saying, here's the, you know, here's what I want you to play, you know, you know, well, what notes am I playing in that hand? Well, it's kind of hard to see when I'm really playing it live like this, you know, mm -hmm. what am I playing now? So, you know, very intentionally while we're shooting lesson videos, you know, I'm doing things like this and, you know, and we're pointing out, or I've got some, you know, something that's, it's, there's an advantage, I think, to doing this and you can stop, you can pause, you can, you know, do whatever you want to do and, and really make it clear to the student and almost clearer than what you can when you're sitting next to someone in a live lesson, you know what I mean? Because I, because you're looking down over the hands and all that. So that's so, an advantage. And yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and, I was just going to say one, one last thing to tie, it. if I may, and I'll, I'll, I'll tie, tie up the, uh, the thing I was saying about the original song. So Who's the there? problem, and I was, I would always say that was something I would complain about. I'm like, well, I would be two faced and I wouldn't sleep well at night if I went ahead. And after I had said, yeah, that's the beef I have with all these, these methods is that they've got all these hokey tunes in them. No one wants to play and no adult wants to play all these dumb things. They want to play tunes they know. And so what finally broke that open for me, and it was really the, the last piece and I'll quit talking about you know how we did it but the last thing that kind of mentally put it together with we finally got to a point that there was ubiquitous video available you know in people's homes we connected the dots with hey it's not a it's not printed material or video it's both we answered the question of how do we do feedback and the final one was this i don't use any original music in the method in fact there are no songs directly in the course books but to go along with them we have these three song books that have 90 or 100 tunes in them that are just filled with great tunes that everyone knows so i we went ahead and went through the effort to get the copyrights and you know do it all right and that's why no one does that because it's incredibly hard to get copyrights to all mm -hmm. these tunes and use them well we i'll save the gore details but we've got that available so there's these three books that come along with your method that we call them gig books um and again which is kind of the way you know when you go in and see a guy playing a single cocktail gig somewhere he's got this kind of big three ring binder usually and it's not filled with traditional sheet music it's filled with lead sheets and so we provide that so you get three to four hundred lead sheets along with everything and i use those tunes in every single example or every single class we go through so that as you're working through it you're not working through it learning some dumb original tune i wrote you're learning tunes that you really want to write and then that gets to what you were saying about the language ben that's how it happens because once you play a tune and you've got one that you can play trust me the first thing you do when you sit down at a piano is you play it again because it sounds good right you know, yeah you know you know whatever you're doing you would you would sit down to play that, you, you know, and, and then I say, okay, well, and it's, it, it kind of gets you, I think the, the motivational factor of doing it this way, instead of just kind of trudging through and going and going, going with the promise of something good sounding at the end of a year or two is, Hey, we've got this little piece. And by the time you get done with this, you're going to learn how to play autumn leaves or you're going to learn how to play you know, whatever it may be, uh, yeah. Jerry Lee, is, we you know we do great balls of fire. We do some, some old <laughs> Elvis tunes, blue suede shoes. I mean, it's all across the map with Christmas tunes. We do some sacred tunes. It's, it's to give somebody 
some tunes that they can say, hallelujah, I can actually play something. I'm not just practicing, I'm playing. And that is what kind of lights a fire under everyone's you know what to keep them going. So and that, that I think is kind of the secret sauce. So for, there we for go. Sure. That actually leads very well into my next question, which were, you know, kind of sure. success stories. Uh, like you said, and, and, you know, um, through your, you know, through your career in TV, uh, now you're making these, you know, these, and of course you're writing books that people can buy. Uh, no offense. It's uh, it, you. You don't get to see people, um, you know, kind of light up and say, "Hey, I completely understand this." It's uh, you're you're very, uh, you know. Let's just face it. You're not on location when they're picking up this skill yes. and they're not making these breakthroughs. So I wanted to ask you about success stories um, and how you know. Have you heard of any? Have you seen people? Have people related to you? How they have started, you know, playing the piano thanks to your method. Yeah, not not by the hundreds, but by the thousands, Ben. It's really what kind of warms my heart and keeps me going. And a lot of times you think, oh, my God, am I making a difference? But we are fortunate just because of the reach we've had for so many years that, and again, it just sounds boastful to say this, but if somebody could go on the website and see hundreds of them. But yeah, we get a ton of testimonials on a regular basis um, of, yeah, people just saying, you know, finally, I'm playing. And then, you know, this has been a dream. We get a lot of the bucket list people, right? Say, you know, this is something I have wanted to do my entire life. I finally was, you know, I I'm close enough to retirement or just retired and, and, you know, I'm finally doing it. Or we get, you know, people in their thirties and forties that say, you know, I, when I had little tiny kids in my twenties, we just couldn't do it. Now my kids are in high school or they've gone off to college. Now I want some me time. This is, I, I don't want to pass from this earth wanting to be, you know, a wannabe piano player. And so we get a lot of that stuff and, and really charming stories. I mean, some of them, will, I, actually, I'm, I'm sensitive to even get into it because it'll, it's, it, it is, a, but you know, mm -hmm. people that had terminal illness that, that they said, you know, it was the peace and the respite that I found near the end and things of that nature, a charming one from a guy who lost his wife and who played piano and he had never played in his, his life. And he kept walking by the empty piano after she passed and to help him kind of through the grieving process in the evenings, he said, I now, I now sit down and I play tunes and I, I kind of consider that the way that I talk with my wife. So I have a hard time talking. Yeah, about no, it I, it, that, up, that, but, that's um, a very yeah, beautiful just, story. Yeah. Yeah. They really are just, just astoundingly nice stories and a great story of a, you know, a guy, his, his daughter, uh, he surprised his daughter on her wedding because uh, she'd always talked about it. He should play this piano that you know, they, they dusted the piano the whole time they're growing up and she quit playing and he kind of hounded her about it for a long time. She said, Oh yeah, well, if it's such a big deal, why don't you learn to play? So he did and didn't tell her and he actually played for her during their wedding and, and uh, during That's his awesome. daughter's wedding. So, I mean, there's, yeah, there's a I, bunch I, of great stories. I, like I, that. I will say though that, you know, looking through and, and this is just a portion of the testimonies that you have here on the sites uh you have indiana uh -huh. you have massachusetts west palm beach florida hey that's uh, that's where we started uh you, you, have, right. you have iowa california germany i saw in there as well uh, of mm -hmm. course the international audience is more than welcome uh I, I'm, I'm not sure, sure I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you speak you know german or latin or anything yeah, like that. i do not you need to be an english speaker that's Perfect. correct okay so that's probably good to point out but what i'm saying is that uh it, it's it's time not time shifted but it's uh location independence Right. Absolutely, it is. We, you know, we, you know, you will get a box with nine books in it when you when you enroll, depending on which courses you enroll in. Most people do the whole thing, and yeah, so you'll get this box with some books in it. But past that, past the shipping of that, it's all online, and in anywhere, it's it's accessible. It's all web based. So yeah, as long as you, a lot of people do this, Ben, on on tablets. Um, it's just a, it's such a logical yeah. thing thinking of sitting at your piano and having a tablet sitting there next to the book. So here I am looking you right in the face, similar to the shot we're using here on this, on this interview, but it's, uh, you know, it's my ugly muck staring right at you and then <laughs> going to the hands on piano shot and it's just right in front of you. So you can look down and say, Oh yeah. So it's, it's a real it, it, it's an easy feeling thing to do. It's not this oddball thing where like, oh my word, I'm going to run to the TV or I'm going to do somewhere else. And, and whether someone's got a laptop or a, a, a tablet, we, I'm guessing, again, this is kind of anecdotal. That's not, yeah. I'm sure I'm not 100% accurate, but I'm guessing probably, you know, 60%-ish uh, yeah. students are probably using tablets of some variety. You know what and that then means, the other, right? The I, other 40 it, are using them. 
well, are using laptops. That, yeah. that, that means that uh, your next step, of course, you create the lesson plan. Your next step is, of course, iOS and Android apps. So, you know, yes. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, so. Yeah. They, we, we thought about that, frankly, but, you know, it's because this runs, you know, it's, it's basically a web app. It runs so easily in Safari on the, you know, on the iPad side and, and whatever. It, it just, it functions in a browser. So in a way, we almost think it would be overkill for us to do an app, you know. Yeah, well, there's I, not much we can there's not much we can accomplish more in an the, app than we can with within our thing. The only thing I would say with an app is that it it seems and and this is just you know something that I pick up from apps and why people kind of make them. It seems like a sure, package. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, it, it just seems like it's a package product, like a finished product with a bow on it. Uh, there's one application you go, you purchase it. Maybe you know, maybe for you, uh, and this is just your. Feel free to take this. Uh, maybe like an intro <laughs> course because I and, and, and we're going to talk about pricing. Uh, there, you know, this is going to be something that uh, you know you're you're investing in yourself. So I completely understand that. But if there was an app to you know kind of say that, hey, for twenty bucks you can learn to start, or at least you could start learning. Yeah. And it would be like a it would be like a gradual step up to your full blown course, something like that. Sure. Yeah, point point very well taken. It's all, you know, all those kind of strategies are open to us for sure. We do have a completely free intro course. I mean, mm -hmm. it's and and we do that I, as much as much as a, you know, hopefully lead generator to get people going. Frankly, there's not any incentive for us to try to enroll a student that it, that it's not going to be a good fit. And this is going to we are kind of a, a different bird. This is a this is a shoe that's probably going to fit a little bit differently than what most people would think of as piano lessons. Mm -hmm. So we want people to sign up for that free intro course. And, you know, in it, it's it's the intro course is exactly like what you would have if you were a full student, except we don't send you a book. But there's something online you can print out a PDF. But, you know, within about 45 minutes, I'm going to teach you a real hip version of Joy of the World. I mean, it's it's, uh, you know, it's the. Right. Right. It's, you know, yeah, that tune. And we, I go through the whole tune. So it's, it's something I can teach fairly quickly, but it gives someone a really good feel for the process of the, okay, here's one little lesson and seeing my hands. And, you know, it, if that works well and if the tablet works well and, you know, that, that's a great chance for us to say, gee, do you think we'll be a good fit? And if we are, then, you know, you come go. on board and, you know, jump in the water's warm. If not, we saved all of ourselves. It's the last thing in the world we want to do is enroll somebody and, and then you know, right. take their enrollment fee, and then turn around. It's not working, and refund. It's it's that's uh, yeah. not the goal. The you, goal you, is to get somebody playing in a hurry, and at, at the worst, for free in this, you're going to learn a, a hip version of Joy to the World. So you, you, <laughs> you should definitely try, you should definitely try the, uh, the free the free lesson, of course. And as you say, yeah. in kind of the FAQ, uh, people should have access to the instruments as well. It's not just about it, it, I'm sorry, it's not just about watching your videos. It's about following along and practicing as you do. So you recommend yes. people have an instrument to practice on. Yeah. And, you know, on that note, that's another thing that's really in the last uh, kind of along with the the ubiquitous online video, you know, the, that high quality video. The other thing, the you know, instrument manufacturers have just in the last 10 years, digital pianos have just gotten phenomenally we, better. Yeah. And yeah, they're have... great. And they're, the prices come way down. And so that that was a big barrier for a lot of people said, I just don't have an instrument. And then we'd yeah. say, well, don't go out and get a little <laughs> tiny Casio keyboard or, a <laughs> or, you know, you need something, but it doesn't have to be really expensive. Now for five, six hundred dollars, you can just get these phenomenally good pianos that would have been three or four thousand. We don't eight or nine have years ago. a uh, and, and, you know, we're not sponsored by them or anything like that. But uh, yeah, sure. But but Yamaha is actually a friend of the show. They come on every couple of months and. And Great. they and, and and they talk about uh, they actually talk about their pianos quite often and the technology yeah. that goes into their pianos and you know how they I've, can even get uh, digital pianos to have the same resonance sound feel you know, like the weighted keys yeah. of a full blown grand piano yeah yeah it is amazing I've worked with those guys in Roland and, and all the big mm -hmm. manufacturers a lot of them were helping you know, they were at some different at different points throughout the whole life of the show they were underwriters on the TV show and stuff but yeah it is just phenomenal the technology that's gone into those and at the end of the day I, and I I say this a lot I mean on a personal level somebody says oh, okay Scott what would you rather play it's a pretty easy step down for me if I had my druthers and I had the space and I had a piano tuner that was, you know, that I <laughs> was attached to with a belt. I would like to play a big concert grand wherever I was. Mm -hmm. But 
assuming that the piano wasn't tuned within 24 hours of when I sit down to play it and I've got the space, you know, and all the rest of it, or that I don't want to put on headphones, you know, it's all those kind of things. The minute I get away from a big, nice grand piano, I immediately jump to by, by far preferring a good digital piano. Yeah. They sound that good. And particularly when you're wearing headphones, the, um, uh, the 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 sound generators and all these instruments now have just gotten like you were describing all these the technology they're using they sound you know they're they're sampling these huge you know these these huge perfectly in tune grand well, pianos that, and they never go out of tune why wouldn't you want to sound that way well, it sounds well, sure. better than an and upright so, acoustic you know so that actually uh, and, and that actually kind of undercuts the next question I was going to ask you because like I said we do have these uh, manufacturers of digital pianos and really you know all, all kinds of pianos here on the show I was going to ask you as sure. someone who's who's been playing for so long uh, what would you recommend for them as they make pianos like what would they improve on but it sounds like you're in conversation with these guys anyway so they probably know your feedback already yeah. And, you know, I don't have much. They've got, you know, it's, it's kind of like the issue at some point, you know, when, when things were really slow on, on computers, every speed upgrade was <laughs> fantastic, was fantastically different in your user experience. Frankly, I think all these pianos have gotten so ridiculously good. I mean, for a long time, the sound was real good, but then the key beds didn't feel like a, a real piano. Mm -hmm. Now they've got that nailed. They've got, you know, the, the weighted action on the keys, and this is more than listeners need to worry about. And, yeah, I don't want to confuse yeah. anybody or think that that's all a requirement for sitting down and having some fun playing because it's not. But to kind of get into the weeds, yeah, the the you know for somebody that really plays a lot, a lot of piano players would say, "Oh, I just don't like the way they feel," and because the key beds just didn't yeah. feel the same. Well, that's that's water under the bridge. They nailed that. the The sounds are spectacular, and you know, like you know, the piano player, I I very much enjoy the fact that I can quickly change. I'll do this, you know, instead of playing a grand piano, I can. You know, I can immediately a little bit more modern. And, yeah. yeah, like in all, you know, the, you know, whatever, you know. You know, any of those sounds, just great old sounds. That, any of those things that it's fun for me to be able to just switch and do that and play something or, you know. <laughs> you know, all that stuff you can, it's just, it's, it's kind of for, for pure entertainment reason. I mean, there's not a soul on the planet that has more fun playing than I do. Ben. And, and I, I make no bones about it. I am far from a spectacular piano player, but I'm a, I'm a decent player, but I, I can find my way around, but you know, I am not a, a virtuoso in any way. I'm probably a better drummer than I am piano player, frankly. And, and, but that, that doesn't keep me from just absolutely finding playing piano magical and that's the thing i think maybe we we can give somebody a little taste of that it's like you know here taste this ice cream because <laughs> instead of promising somebody hey go through all this hard work and we're going to give you some ice cream at the end well if no one's ever tasted the ice cream they don't have a big incentive to well, work hard because they don't know how good it is Scott, but if I'm, you can give them a taste that's you got them hooked and that's that's my mission in life so. right i'm going to jump in here just for a little bit because we have like two minutes left Please and do. then we're going to have to you know kind of say that's the end of, of the show today but in these last two minutes um you know we can't really get into this topic about you know prescription drugs but it, you did touch on it lately and i wanted to ask you that really is that what you see for people learning piano is that it's you know sure it's a skill you can take it you can you know play a song here or there but uh I think that's you know technology in so many ways has encouraged people to be very uh, sedative. They're very relaxed. They sit in a chair. They watch programming. Uh, you know they binge watch Netflix things like that. Are you saying that right. that's really what you're offering is something that's um, a bit more? I don't say fulfilling like it's some kind of spiritual experience, but something that well, you know is. <laughs> gives people something different than they are used to. Yeah, you know it's a it's a. It's undeniable there are a bunch of health benefits and we could go through and kind of do this, you know, this big pitch of, hey, you know, it, it's, it activates brain regions like learning foreign language and good to potentially fend off Alzheimer's and fantastic for, for rewiring things because you're using your fingers independently. And it's, it's been proven to, you know, stress reduction and blood pressure reduction. You know, you can kind of go through all this litany of things, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know what? Music is a uniquely, or performing music is kind of this uniquely human thing. And I hate to sound hokey about it, but for people that have never tasted that, 
ice cream of, of, of mm-hmm. making music, not just re not just regurgitating someone else's written notes, but to, to play and to just be a music maker. It's, it's a fantastically satisfying soul satisfying thing to do. And I think that's part of the reason we get such dramatic, you know, feedback from people saying this has really changed my life. I mean, I used to hear that. I think, oh, how hokey are you? Change your life. You're just playing some piano. But man, it just you hear it over and over and over. And people say, I'm finally feeling really human about this. And if I I can, you know, if a few more people can do that before I pass from the earth, I'll feel like I left things in a better way they are. And I'm happy to report that this is, you know, by tenfold I got to say doing that, more for our students than anything we've done. So yeah, I, I, I definitely have to say that, um, you know, the passion is definitely there. I, I, I can read that from you just in our conversation. And I do want to say our conversation uh, flew on by. We have already taken up an hour. So uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and wrap the No, th- this was this was an amazing interview, really. Um, and I got to say that uh, we should wrap it up by where can people find more information and we should go over pricing real quick. We have it up on the video. Sure. But uh, please go. Yeah, absolutely. It. The uh, well, the, you know, simply go to our website at piano in a flash.com. So piano in a flash.com is where, where our online method lives and you can find out all the information there. The pricing uh, currently it's, it's basically 150 days, 149. So it's about $150 a course. There are six courses in the full method. So, and they're linear. So course one through six, and then like most things, the more courses you enroll in at once, the less expensive each course gets. Right. So they start at 149 a piece. If you do two at once, um, it goes down, you save $50, it goes down to 249 instead of 300, probably 70 to 80% of our students actually buy the entire bundle, which is 699. And that enrolls you for life in the entire method. Uh, there's this is not a subscription. There are not recurring fees. It's a it's a one time enrollment. Um, there's a 30 day money back guarantee, and and we strongly encourage someone to, you know, to try it. And if it's not working, send it back. Uh, you know, we don't want unhappy people out there. But uh, yeah, I'm yeah. happy to report that uh, we we don't have a lot of problems that way. So uh, yeah. hey, and you know perfect. you've got to go. I, I'll save the time. I know we're running out of time. If you go to the site, we can make a very very strong value proposition versus the cost of, of going weekly to a teacher for $30, $35 forever. And, so, and, um, and of course, like we said, uh, the first lesson's free, so you can definitely uh, try it. And hey, yeah. we, we, highly yeah. re- we highly recommend it. everyone go do that. And uh, Scott, really, as I said before, this was this was a way better interview than I could have hoped for. Um, and hey, everyone, we've been talking <laughs> to well, and, and and I say that because yeah, I'm I'm just not musically you know inclined myself, but you you broke it down, you showed examples, and this was perfect. So everyone, uh, we have been talking to Mr. Scott Houston, founder of Piano in a Flash, and of course, you may know him from many other places but hey you now know him from computer america as well so scott thank there you so you much go. for joining us thank you ben it was a ball i really appreciate the time all right have uh, so have a great one uh, we're going to sign off everyone computer america monday through friday 4 p.m to 5 p.m eastern uh until next time of course find this video on youtube go check it out everyone we'll catch you next time bye-bye <laughs>